made threes. I mean, they were throwing three guys at Brad and holding him all night. And Brad was keeping his composure. I give him a lot of credit. That is that is one of his best games I've seen him play, uh, dealing with what he had to deal with. And and how he stepped up and made plays. That's what you have to do. That's why you have a team. Everybody stepped up. Everybody chipped in. Chipped in. Um, that was, you know, uh, he's the thing I love about him. He has a pure heart. He just plays. He plays the right way. He plays hard. He plays for his teammates. He loves the he loves the guys he's playing with. Uh, and I love coaching him. He's he's earned these extra minutes. He's we don't even care if we have a small lineup out there. He plays. He plays with a big heart, and that's all that ca that's all I care about. The, I want to ask you about three point defense. You know, they made nine in the first half. I know Van Vliet had the big one at the end of regulation, but um, what was it like just trying to make adjustments and having a little bit better success as the game went on? Yeah, you know, the the, the, the thing is also, and we didn't mention it before the game. We didn't mention it. We didn't even have a breakfast meeting today. We just said, hey, get up. We got to make sure we do our COVID test at eight o'clock in the morning. And that's always tough to do when you don't go to bed till 530. Um, so we knew we knew the guys were going to be fatigued. I knew it, but I didn't want to I didn't want to bring it up because once you give in, it wins and you got to you got to fight through it. Our bodies can do a lot more and our mind just has to you know, tell us what to do. And, and I know we were fatigued. I was I was tired. I finally woke up in overtime. But it was it was a it was a it was a tough game, tough travel. We lost an hour. Tough game last night. Um, well, I give our guys credit. The mental toughness the group's had is is um, proud of. Fought through a lot of stuff that's helped us to have all this mental toughness. Everybody's chipped in, played well uh, at certain parts of the of the game. We gave up so many threes in the first quarter, and I thought we. In the second quarter, a little bit better, and then the second half, much better. We tried to foul them at the end, um, but I don't know what they, they didn't call it. And they fouled Russell twice at the end. Even Van Fleet's going nuts. They fouled him, the one that we, we turned it over. But those are fouls, man. The guy, they're trying to foul. They're yelling at the guys, I'm fouling them, fouling them. Didn't happen. Green. Hey, Scott, um, you mentioned Brad, and that's what I wanted to ask about. You know, what were they doing to him all night, and what did, what changed him. late in that fourth quarter for him to kind of free himself up? He has to fight through it. The freedom of movement is not supposed to – you're not supposed to fight through it, but he has, he has to do it. That's, that's what he does. Brad is, Brad is one of the, the best stars I've been around. He just plays through it. Gets frustrated, and he should. He should get frustrated. I get frustrated for him. But he's kept his composure tonight, and he was attacking. And that's what you have to do, attacking and get. He finally got some got some opportunities at the line in the, in the second half. And he was stuck on the one technical for for a while. <laughs> and what changed in that third quarter that kind of allowed you guys to kind of finally go on that run? I think you guys were down like thirteen and. And that I think it went on a 27 run or something like that. That kind of got you guys back in and seemed like you got your juice at that point. Well, we, we made some shots. You know, sometimes when you know you don't have your, you don't have things going and then you can make a shot here and there, but we made the extra pass. I thought, I thought um, Bradley's five, five, five assists were, were important because they seemed to be all like three point shots or wide open shots. Cause they were, they were putting two or three guys on them and you know, we haven't shot the ball well from three, but, you know, now we're starting to get our guys back and we can make some of those shots if they, if they continue to do that. But Russell, 17 assists, 17 rebounds. And I don't think he played one of his better games, but look, look at the numbers. It's just, it's mind boggling how he just wills himself when he doesn't have it. Uh, he didn't have the offensive shots to fall for him, but he got the rebounds and he got the passing. That's what, that's the sign of a, a, a champion right there. That's how he plays. Thank you. Ben. Hey, Scott. Um, you, you mentioned the idea of uh, guys playing for, for each other. Uh, obviously, because of the COVID restrictions, we can't be around you guys the way we'd be normally. We can't get it. It's not as easy to get a gauge of 
team mood or morale or body language or things like that. So all we have is what you guys do on the court. And it is, does seem pretty obvious that you guys are playing for one another. I'm just wondering for you, what's been the catalyst for that to sustain, especially now it's been for several weeks. This has been one of the the most challenging years of, of my coaching career, but I love it because I love what the guys have gone through and I, I love that, that they fought back. I mean, we were last in the league in the standings and it wasn't, wasn't because of effort or because of a lot of things that we had to go through. They kept fighting, they kept playing. We haven't even had time to practice. And there's like today, we didn't even, have, we didn't, I didn't even want to watch 15 minutes of film with them because I knew after that, after the COVID test at eight o'clock, they weren't going to go back to bed. Nobody, and it's hard to do. Um, so they needed to get some rest throughout the day because I knew it was, I didn't think we were going to go into overtime. I wasn't hoping it would go, but it was great to see. This team fights for one another. It's unfortunate we don't have um, our arena full of fans, but we got 2,100 people. They get to see it, they get to feel it. And it's it's been great. We got two good leaders that, that help us navigate through all of this. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, with with the three centers, you, you tend to kind of give all three of them a chance in, in the first half, and, and then you close with, you know, whomever the, the best matchup or whoever has the hot hand or something. T tonight it's Robin. What's your decision making process and who's gonna close? When do you when do you make that decision? Uh, how do you go about the decision beyond just this guy's playing well? Well, I think it's also situations, matchups. There's certain guys that do certain things better than the others without giving away what they do. Um, there's certain guys that play better with certain players, certain bigs. So I figure all that out. And it's all, I mean, it's not all on the fly. I mean, I prepare and our staff prepares and figure out sets and things that we can run. Uh, I, th I thought Alex, I thought Alex was solid. He was solid. He, I mean, he didn't play a lot of minutes. I thought Gaff, he, he wasn't, he, I don't know what, he didn't have one of his better games, but th that happens. Can't play well every night, but you can play hard. And I thought all three guys played hard. And, but I thought Rolo, Rolo had the best, best thing going. And I, and it, it's a, he, he can step up and make free throws. That's what I like about him also. He gets in there, he battles and he, he competes and, He's like I said many times. He's he's great to coach. And and you guys ended up getting away with it because Brad won the jump ball. But but that play where Brad got trapped late in the in the fourth quarter on the baseline, um, how that's the second time that happened. It was kind of reminiscent of the Boston game. How how can you guys avoid situations like that late in games in the future? Well, I can call it. A, I can position myself better in front of the referee. I call the timeout, but it probably. That's a that's a tough call because it's so such a bang bang. They don't they can't see both, but they should be able to see that and hear me. So I got I got to be able to position myself better. Um, I, I put Brad in a tough position there. But also I also give credit to Landon Landon Tatum. It's one of the toughest jobs uh, in our organization, game to game, because the guy who does the video behind the bench, I give him a lot of a lot of grief at times because I want it, I want it right away and I want to see plays right away because I'm going to complain. I want to know I'm complaining for the right reasons. And, and it's unfair because I get to see it in slow motion and referees don't. Uh, but that, that challenge was, I thought that was, you know, a big, big part if not the biggest play of the game and give credit to Landon. That's a hard job. And he, he nailed that one. Zach. I was going to ask you about that challenge, but I have another one for you. Uh, you guys obviously just took a huge. He does, he got, he, we've had some good ones, and he's got them right. The bad ones, he blames them on me for some reason. You guys obviously took a huge jump today in the standings uh, winning this game. Did it almost feel like uh, it was a true sign of, like, you were really stepping over a huge obstacle in this game to, to get to that next step and, and – get to the end of this playoff push? Yeah, I mean, we want to get we want to get involved in the playoffs from day one, you know, even with all the stuff that's gone on this season, we still wanted to focus on just playing good basketball day in, day out. And, you know, we're going to get everybody 
Matt Rui hopefully will be back um, in Indianapolis, and that can give us another another weapon that we that obviously a very talented one. But yeah, I mean we know we know what what's at at stake. We know we want to keep competing and playing well. We have some good tough. We got last night was hard. Last night was a very emotional um, game, and we've had opportunities to close it out, but if we didn't close it out, that's, a, that's one of the best teams in the league. It's championship. That, that team has been championship ready, but to bounce back to play against a team that's desperate, fighting for their playoff life, we knew that they were going to bring it. But we bounced back with we and we played hard, and we didn't have our good stuff offensively, but we managed to get the win. Neil? Hey, Scott. Pascal Siakam kind of got loose on you guys. Where do you think you guys can improve defensively in the future in that aspect? Obviously, not having Rui hurts. Yeah, we didn't have a matchup for him. Our, our best matchup was our point guard. Um, that's the that's the truth. Rui Rui is a guy that can guard bigger bigger forwards. And I thought, you know, we and then they 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 did a lot of picks that we have to switch and and they were going and he was attacking to his right hand and. And make and making plays, and he was getting to the free throw line. We were fouling him, and he was getting to his right hand. You do that, he's going to have a good game because he's strong. He's strong right. He's special right. And we allowed him to get to his right, even in the last play when we let him get to his right, and we fouled him for the and one. What was clicking so well for you tonight? And you know when when you know they're double and tripling Brad like they are. Is that? A mentality that you, hey, you know, somebody's got to come and pick up because it's obviously going to be tough on him. Um, I mean, I've always said that when you play with a with a guy like Brad, the whole difference is going to be um, on him. Um, and we have Russ too; that is kind of the same thing. So I always try to come in with the mentality of being aggressive and and taking the shots when it's open because I think that's what uh, our team needs. But um, they were, they had two, three guys on Brad the whole game. It was tough on him for sure. And also when you're driving, you get so many fouls and it's, it's hard for the referees to uh, give you all of them. So um, it was definitely hard on him, but I'm glad I, I, um, I was able to help with uh, those threes and kind of open the floor and um, give him a little bit more space. And just physically, how tough was a day like tonight um, considering, you know, the back-to-back -back time that you guys got in um you know at what point did you ever feel you know like yourself or was it just one of those things you just kind of had to gut through i mean you gotta definitely fight through it um once you step on the court you try not to think about all these things but it was definitely like very very tough uh, we got here 3 30 we had to wake up at 8 a.m to get tested and then kind of like break your sleep and it's it's very hard but um we're here for that. I think we did a great job uh, mentally, just being tough and 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 playing the game um, like we did. You know, overtime we didn't stop uh, fighting. We didn't stop playing hard the whole the whole game. Even though um, I'm pretty sure not only me, everybody was was feeling that um, from from yesterday. But I think uh, it was a great week for us, and and I'm happy for that. Cool. Thank you, Chase. Hey, uh, well, um, you uh, have obviously have a knack for the hustle plays, you know, whether it, it be a steal or um, a, a save out of bounds. Um, on a night like this, where you, when you know that you're, the team is collectively probably pretty tired, how important is it, like, adding the extra effort and the energy plays to get people going? Um, I mean, it's huge. Not only me, but we got players that do that too. AG, uh, Hutch, guys that come from the bench that I think uh, it's their job to do it. Um, you know, it's always huge. It's always bring the, the energy up, you know, guys that sometimes are feeling a little tired and a little down and you make a play like that. You see the bench getting up and um, I think it's huge in, the, in, in that game, you know, most mostly in a game like that where um, you can easily go down. You can easily get tired. You can easily say, oh, we played last night. We got here super late. We, if we lose, it's okay. Uh, those plays kind of change the team's mentality, and I think it's uh, it's it's big. Zach. 
Oh, well, was tonight almost like a complete encapsulation of the whole season? Like, the travel was crazy. You're waking up early to get tested. You guys didn't even have a meeting. You go through this marathon of a game. Uh, did it just really kind of exemplify what you guys have been through all year? Yeah, um, we. I, I don't think we can play the victim. I think every team is going through that. Um, I don't watch everybody interview and all that, but I'm pretty sure every team are going or have been through that uh, at some point in the season, you know? So uh, we, like I said, we're here to do that. Um, we gotta be tough mentally. We gotta be ready to go. And we know it's a, it's a key point in the season. It was a key game for us uh, to make the play in. And, um, and I think we, we did a great job. Everybody was locked in. Uh, everybody uh, played hard and fight through. Everybody knew that uh, that game was important for us. And um, so it's, it's tough, but it's tough for everybody. I think every team has been through that at some point this season. Love the old school look in the jersey, by the way. Fred. Hi, Harold. Um, you, I know you've had injury issues in, in years past. How, how would you say that your your health has held up this year just compared to, to yeah. other years in spite of just, you know, this season being as crazy as it's been? I mean, the best that, that I've been um, since I came to the league, I think uh, it's something I put a lot of work on, um, a lot of mind work, a lot of body work, um, weight room, um, diet, you know, a lot of, I think, professionalism that, uh, it's holding me up in this season and, and staying healthy. Hopefully, um, you don't jinx me <laughs> and I stay, I stay that way. But, um, I think it takes a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of time, a lot of professionalism and, uh, I'm doing my best to, uh, to keep it that way. Did you, did you change anything with the way you work out, the way, the way you keep your body, all of that in order to adjust and try to stay healthier? I mean, I was talking to, uh, Russ and Rolo the other day it's it's my first season that I'm playing minutes every game so I feel like I'm a rookie you don't, I'm still learning how to take care of my body how to uh when to lift when to rest when to come and get some shots up when not to do it but uh I definitely changed my my mindset um a lot of like time thinking about it visualizing and meditating and like doing all that things that I um Maybe two, three years ago, I didn't do it, and uh, I think it's a process. You learn, you learn a lot uh, when you do that, and um, and I think I'm in the best shape of my career, um, not only physically but mentally, and um, it shows up on the court. So um, I'm happy with that, and I'm gonna keep working on that too. It seems like they were grabbing, throwing three guys at you, face guarding you as soon as you came across half court. You know. What was the challenge in trying to find your way against the way they were defending you tonight? Uh, first, I want to praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity for a healthy game. Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as I walked out the locker room, they had, they had a guy on me, uh, so to speak. So it was, uh, it was tough. They ran a box and one the majority of the game. I haven't seen a box and one since probably last time we played them and uh, in high school before that. But, you know, that's, that's Nick Nurse. He's very uh, – he likes to jump the game up with different schemes. Uh, so, I mean, it was, it was effective. It kind of kept me out of the game, kept me from, you know, touching the ball. Uh, you know, I kind of had to be a decoy and just continue to move, move around without the ball. You know, if I did have it, they sent two or three guys at me. You know, so I was just getting off the ball and letting my teammates make plays. So, uh it was tough, but eventually, you know, I knew if I trusted my teammates to be able to make plays, knock down shots, everything else would open up for me, and it did down the stretch. What's it say about y'all to be able to fight through going into overtime in a game you know, you know, this is the team that's pushing y'all for that last spot, but at the same time, you're coming off that long game last night and all the physical wear and tear of getting in early and all that kind of stuff? It was tough. I mean, we got in at 3 or 4 in the morning and uh, had to wake up and test at 8. So it was, it was tough, uh, tough adjustment for us. Definitely a tough back to back, but uh, we prevailed. You know, it definitely shows a lot of signs of growth and you know maturity on our behalf. And uh, you know, we just got better. You know, we we're just trying to build on you know what we have in front of us. You know, we have a great opportunity, uh, especially now we're going into Indiana. So 
Uh, you know, we knew the last time we were in a back-to-back, -back, we lost to Dallas and we didn't necessarily like how that game ended either. It was very close too. So, you know, we had to, we had to make sure we close it out tonight. Appreciate you. Chase. Hey Brad, uh, what does it say about just the, the, the strength of this team and the way you guys are playing now to have players like Neto and, and Lopez step up uh, when you and Russ maybe didn't have your, your better shooting nights and dealt with some tough defenses? Uh, I mean, that's what we are. You know, we trust each other and, you know, we depend on each other to make plays. And, you know, we, we want our guys to, you know, shoot the ball. You know, when Russ and I make plays for them, you know, we want guys to be aggressive. Uh, I even tell guys tonight, like, don't even look for me. Like, just, just play ball because a lot of times we get too stagnant and too caught up in just trying to get me the ball as a box of one versus just playing ball and just taking advantage of opportunities we have. Um, so it was definitely great to be able to see, you know, Neto coming to his own and, and, and Rolo kind of close it out for us down the stretch too uh, at the free throw line. But uh, we needed them both. And every game is like that. You know, we, we will have, you know, two or three guys who come in and really impact the game for us. And that's what we need. Hey, Brad. Um, on that late trap where you ended up getting tied up and it was and it was the jump ball, that was kind of reminiscent of the, the Boston play. Uh, and I'm just wondering, that's the second time that's happened late in the game. What can you guys do in the future just to avoid those sorts of situations in the corner? Uh, just stop going to the corner. All right, thank you. Yeah. Zach. Brad, did tonight feel like you were actually literally making a jump as a team in the standings? Because obviously it was a huge game. You gained two games on the Raptors. You're, you know, so close to, to clinching that minimum of get being in the play-in. Uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely – feels great, but obviously we, we want to make it happen. Uh, you know, we still uh, what five games left. We still got some games left and that's all them out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely happy with where we are. We, we got a great opportunity to move up again, you know, if we, we beat Indiana. Uh, so it's uh, dominoes are falling in our favor a little bit. So we just got to continue to control what we can control, be confident and uh, take it a day at a time, game at a time. And the you telling the guys don't even look for me and stuff like that, like play ball, was that at halftime, or, or or were you saying that just during the game? It was early in the game, uh, and definitely reemphasizing at halftime. Uh, but just you know, it's a. I knew it was crazy when I seen like if I had the ball one time, I had four guys on, and they none of them were my teammates, and I was okay. That's what type of night this is. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm able to get off the ball and trust my teammates to make plays and. Uh, I think that helps, you know, helps with confidence too, uh, for my teams to be able to make plays and, you know, get out of their comfort zone a little bit and, uh, you know, be aggressive. Hey, Robin, uh, one of your more efficient nights, when you're in that groove, how are you able to balance, okay, this is a matchup I can take advantage of, this is where I can really force the issue for myself versus, you know, passing out or things like that? Um, you know, you know, you know, when you see it, um, Russ, Brad, Howell, Ish, everybody, they, get, they, they give me a lot of confidence. They tell me, you know, when I get the ball, they trust me to do my thing out there. So it makes it easy for me to go out there and perform. Chase. Hey, Robin, uh, we're all coming to learn that the, the turnaround was pretty difficult for you guys uh, with the early COVID testing and, you know, the back-to-back -back and everything. What was it like for you? Uh, how much sleep were you able to get? Um, and how, just how tired were you out there? And what were you going through? I I can sleep. Uh, I can sleep in a, in a in the middle of a tornado or something. So I'm. That's something. If I have a S level, any S level skills, that would be it. So sleep for me isn't a problem. <laughs> Fred. Hey, Robin. Um, Ru Russell is, as I'm sure you know, only one triple-double away from tying Oscar Robertson's all-time record. 
Uh, and I'm just wondering what comes to your mind when you hear a stat like that with a record that's been around for so long. Yeah, that, that's pretty incredible. Um, that's one of those records that I read about when I was younger. And it, it, they always made it sound like nobody was ever going to break that. Nobody was ever going to, was ever going to pass that. And, uh, you know, Russ has that right in his grasp. That's, that's something really special. Matt Paris. Hey, Robin, um, it seems like the teams that were most affected by COVID, obviously you guys had a three week pause. You're playing this game in Tampa where, you know, Toronto isn't normally there. Um, do you think that, the, and you guys are all fighting for a playoff spot kind of at the end of the season here. Do you feel like there's anything to that, that like the, the circumstances of the season, most of like the teams that were most affected are the ones kind of fighting at, at the end here? Or is that just a coincidence? Perhaps. Uh, so much has gone on that I can't even begin to divine who who is in what situations. It's just a muddle to me, kind of. Just thankful to be where I am right now with the guys I'm with. Yeah. And, and did it feel like, uh, you know, a, a big win considering that you guys were, you know, and, and you uh, you created some distance with yourself with the, this one tonight, uh, mathematically with the standings? Every win for us is a big win. I think that's that's the point where that's the point. Uh, um, that's how we're going out there every night. Every every win is a big win for us. Thanks, Michael Shapiro. Hey, Robin. Uh, this is your thirteenth season. You've always had plenty of teammates. What makes Russell unique as a teammate and as a person to be around? Um, Russ's drive is is unique that's supremely russ um the way he the way he cultivates his relationship with his teammates um he's always picking them up but in his own his own way um he's always getting after people trying to bring out their uh bring out the potential he sees in them it's, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to play with him is there anyone that you would compare him to or, or is he kind of just a unique guy in himself uh no that, he, he he's unique you know from the way he shows satorially, the way he shows up to games, to the way he leaves it all on the floor, Russ is a unique individual. Thank you. Zach. Rolo, 12 of 14 from the line. Obviously, you hit some some big free throws. Probably, you know, not a, a place you've been a ton in your career, just as a big. But um, I wanted to ask you just your routine that you go through. I know you put, like, your – your hands on your knees and you kind of just like take a deep breath. Is that like a mental exercise you're doing or just part of your routine? Uh, perhaps a little bit. Um, I always, I know that sometimes I speed myself up when I'm at the free throw line, taking that step back helps me relax, slow myself down. Um, also it's kind of silly, but I feel like it's, it's, it helps me simulate stepping into the shot a little bit. Um, I guess there, there's, there may, I, I want to dig deeper and see what kind of symbolism lies, lies down there in the subliminal level, but I don't know if I have the time. Yeah, maybe jot down some notes about it. Yeah, perhaps. Thanks. All right, we'll finish up with Christos. Hey, Robin. After a tough loss in uh, 20, uh, 24 hours uh, earlier, how proud do you feel about the turnaround of your team and what it means about your mentality and your identity as a team? Um, you know, I think every, every NBA team goes through things like that. Um, that's, that's part and parcel with the league. Um, you, you see the game on the schedule. And as I said earlier, every game at this point is a must win for us. So we, we take them as they come. And about your performances, how help you Bradley Bill and Russell West to, to play some of your best basketball of your career this season? Yeah. Um, obviously they're, they're two superiorly talented players. Um, and it's, it's a real treat. It's a real pleasure to be able to share the court with them. They make it easier for every, every single one of us all down the roster. And one last real quick question. Have you got any pre, uh, wrestling pre-game routine this season? <laughs> not yet, but uh, not yet, but uh, there's still some games left. Honestly, Bob, I've been, we've been talking about it every day. So <laughs> it, it, that's going to change. It's not going to change. <laughs> Uh, when if I'm lucky enough and blessed enough to break it, then we can talk about it then.
what do you think it, it means to be able to be a guy who has just been able to play so long at the intensity that you do every single night? Um, it's a blessing. I don't, I don't take this game for granted. I don't take the opportunity to go out and compete for granted. Um, I want to be the best at what I do. Um, and that's basically it. Thank you. Chase. Ross, um, how big was it to have guys like Hall Neto and, and Robin Lopez step up? I understand, you know, not a, not a lot of guys got a ton of sleep. And obviously with the start you guys had for those guys to give you a lift. I was good, man. You know, that's why um, collectively in the past month or so we've been playing better because everybody on the team has been doing a great job of uh, just locking in and, and stepping up the games when we need them the most. And uh, for you, you, you were traded here about six months ago, and obviously these, these six months have been an absolute whirlwind. I'm just curious, what's it been like uh, playing for the Wizards and, and living in a new city and just what have these last six months been like for you as you've adjusted to new surroundings? Uh, it's been great. You know, um, the city, the team, the coaches, everybody's kind of welcomed me and my family with open arms. And, uh, you know, that's all you can ask for. And my job is to go out and, and be professional. Uh, this is a job, and I make sure that I go out and give everything I have, uh, you know, for the team, for the city. Zach. Russ, that charge you took uh, towards the end of, I think the end of the of regulation, so much happened, you know, in overtime and everything. But uh, for you to just step in with five fouls, is that for you just like do whatever it takes? I might have to sacrifice, you know, my six fouls, but we got to make the winning play. Yeah, just make the right play. Um, sometimes throughout games, like I've always said, you can impact the game in different ways. Um, and defensively, I try to make sure I'm locked in and engaged and, I try to make winning plays when the game is all line. Neil. Hey, Russ. Does your routine change at all in a night that you guys don't get a lot of sleep? Do you try and get more sleep during the day or anything like that? No, unfortunately, no. Um, it's just very unfortunate that the way it's scheduled, you know, because we got to get up in the morning and test at 8 a.m. We get in at 4 a.m., 4.30 you don't get a chance to sleep, then you got to eat and get ready to get back on the bus, come back to the game. So it's very unfortunate as much as we love to play, as much as, you know, it's good to play, but our health and our body is important too, which is, uh, you know, I'm not too happy about the way that we made this back to back, but we got through it. We got the win and we just move on. Hopefully in seasons to come, we can do a better job of scheduling uh, and, and taking a lot of those things in consideration, especially flying from Milwaukee all the way to Tampa. Russell, on that note, obviously this the schedule is is unlike anyone, and, and you know it's it's unprecedented. But in general, would you like to see less than an eighty two game season over that same normal span, or are you good on eighty two? Um, I just go out and play. One that decision to be made, we vote on it. If we want to play less, we play less, play more, keep the same. Um, um, but as it pertains to this particular situation, I'm not too fond of the time amount of time we had to recover to be able to play, uh, you know, tonight based on playing yesterday. 